Tom, talk a little bit about your business, and what, it's really fascinating, and what you're doing. Or, and, and you're just getting started, so we were talking about the hours yeah. that you've been working. It's terrifying, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, we're still very much a startup, so it's terrifying and awesome and terrible and wonderful all at the same time. Um, I'm glad you, you brought up the, the, the point of really trying to drive demand as part of the solution, because I think that that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, as a brief backstory, our, our, our business, 4P Foods, was largely an inspiration um, that I had from experience with a CSA. Uh, most people know it's a community-supported agriculture. It's a way to participate in your local food economy where you find a farm and you, you buy a share in that farm and then every week during the season you, you get a box of food. Uh, and it's great and it's romantic in theory because like my farmers, Steve and Anita, wonderful people, they had two girls and white picket fence, the whole nine. Uh, I knew exactly how their food was grown with organic practices. And I was trying to evangelize to all of my friends that they should sign up for this thing and realize I sort of began to hear myself explaining how it worked. I'm like, well, yeah, you just you, you pay in the beginning of the season for six months of vegetables. If you're out of town, yeah, that's challenging, but don't worry about it. And then you go to a random front porch across town to pick up this box of vegetables. Yes, it's a random front porch across town, and I don't have a car, so I got on my bike, and ironically, it rains almost every Tuesday, apparently. <laughs> So it's uphill both ways in the rain to get a random box. There were several times where people stopped me. I'm like, what are you doing, sir? Because I would run up and get a box and put it on my bike and off I go. So of course my friends wouldn't sign up because they thought I was nuts. And in many ways, I think I was. Um, and then around about the same time, I was reading one too many Michael Pollan books. And that really started the beginning of my quarter life crisis. <laughs> because I realized that, that this is such a big Michael problem. Michael Pollan is the road to ruin. Yeah, I don't know if I should thank him or blame him, but um, it kind of opened my eyes to just how big this problem is. Bar Mark Bittman recently said, we're going to change food, we need to change everything. Um, so because I was looking at money in politics and our education system and uh, food itself and all of these externalized costs and all that I really kind of knew was small business. And that's when I sort of landed on some of these ideas around true cost of counting is, is maybe could we use this engine of business to do something about it? Uh, so I started 4P Foods. We're a benefit corporation, um, which we could talk about more later. We're a benefit corporation which gets local food from about 100 small local farms here in the, uh, the D.C. region. And we deliver it to our customers every week. We deliver it to them at their house or at their office so they don't have to take that fatal bike ride. Um, we let them skip any time they want, so if they're traveling, uh, that's fine. Uh, and they also don't get corn hangover, which I had every August because we just got lots of corn all August. And I love corn, but you can only do so much with corn. So by having 100 farms, we have a lot of diversity. So in theory, we're, we're, we're making local food, local sustainable organic food, as easy, if not easier, uh, than going to the grocery store. Uh, but it's not cheap. So we target a certain demographic of people that can afford that. But as a benefit corporation, we then are able to take a percentage of all the food that we, we bring to our customers, to our members. We set it aside and we donate it to our uh, partner, Martha's Table, here in the city. And they work with low-income communities. So if our members who can afford this $35 bag of, of sexy kale and beautiful raspberries and shiitake mushrooms, the kids in their after-school program are eating kale and raspberries and shiitake mushrooms and learn about where it came from and why is it good, and this is extremely nutrient-dense. Uh, and our members of our community that we're building, the people that can afford it, they're happy because not only is it the health for them, uh, but they know that a percentage of all of their food dollars, they're voting with their fork quite effectively, are going to support their low-income neighbors. So in theory, uh, and thankfully, it's, it's actually working. We're growing every month. We're adding more members than we're losing. We're adding more farm partners. We're now about to do uh, meats and eggs and hopefully seafood. So it's, uh, it is creating demand, but it's also creating a community of people who really care about their role in the greater picture. Let me ask you a quick question. Sure. Uh, and I know your answer because you wouldn't be doing it otherwise, but um, the interest in local food, is this a trend? Or is this something that might stick around for a long time? Um, I mortgaged my house and dumped my life savings into a local food <laughs> vegetable <laughs> company. So if it is indeed a trend, I've got a problem. But uh, no, it, it, it can't be a trend. Because if, if it is a trend, if, if it comes and goes, then all of these problems that we've been talking about for the last day and a half are only going to get worse. 
It is one of the pieces of the solutions. You know, I heard someone very eloquently say that, that if we're going to redesign a new, equitable, just food system of tomorrow, it will look a lot like a hologram where it's all these little solutions, all these individual pictures of everyone playing their part, but taken together as a whole, then it's this sort of beautiful thing that may work. So I don't think it's a trend. Uh, I think it's part of that, that bigger solution. Let me ask you one more question. Sure. Uh, local food doesn't necessarily mean organic. No. Uh, how do you, what standards do you maintain to, for your suppliers? Great question, and we get it almost all the time. Uh, is your food organic? Um, it's really hard, particularly here in the Mid-Atlantic, uh, because of the scale of the farms that are here, uh, because of the lack of infrastructure, because a lot of it is really high humidity. Uh, there's very few organic farms in the area. Certified organic. There are a lot that use organic practices, and we source <clears throat> from those folks. Uh, but we don't say that it's certified organic. However, we're out there visiting with the farms, making sure that they use integrated pest management, uh, making sure they're using no sprays ideally, low sprays if they have to, and are they moving in that right direction? And that's really sort of the big thing for us is are they trying to be good stewards of the land? Can we help them move in that direction?